decisions. From the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night, decisions. I'm going to get out of bed this morning. I'm going to brush my teeth. With, with that, all right, I, was, I could go right down that same road with those type things, but I won't. I'm going to make it on class, uh, uh, to class on time. Decisions. Decisions. I'll pray. Not much of a, wow. Okay, anyway. Roy Bennett, talking about decisions and choices. Roy Bennett says, attitude is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Optimism is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Giving, giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make makes you choose wisely. He also says you cannot control the behavior of others, but you can choose how you will respond. John Sarti says we are our choices. Shannon Adler says, there comes a time in your life when you have to choose to turn the page, write another book, or simply close it. Theodore, Ro Theodore Roosevelt said, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The worst thing you can do is nothing. Decisions, choices. Let's, uh, uh, you know, decisions are, uh, some of them aren't so important. As we uh, heard from Brother Suddeth, brushing your teeth was real, is really important. <laughs> but some decisions aren't that important. Some are crucial. That one thing we did made a difference, a huge difference. At times, one thing is needed. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. You there? And if you keep your Bibles or whatever open, we'll be just looking at the scriptures through as we go through this. Let's pray. Father, we're very grateful for your word. Your word, as your word is preached, your presence is manifested. It's your word. And so we expect your presence to be here today, and we expect you to, to minister your truth to our hearts. And we're thanking you, God, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Acts, uh, uh, not Acts, Luke. Same one wrote the both. But anyway, 38, verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So Jesus arrives in town, and he's decided to go to Mary and Martha's house. Very close friends. Uh, we don't know if he sent a message ahead that he was coming. We don't know if she had any warning, and he wasn't traveling alone. At least 12 others were with him, and probably a few more. So who knows how much time she had to prepare. And so Jesus is coming, though, coming to Martha's house. Uh, you know, Jesus stopping at a single woman's house for a visit wasn't normal. During the first century, teachers didn't show up in the home of single women to be entertained. But Jesus was coming to Martha's house. Verse 38 says that Martha welcomed him 
into her home. That word implies affection. That word implies care, a desire to serve. She's smiling from ear to ear. Her emotions are jumping for joy because Jesus has stopped to see her and Mary. Martha and Mary, they're doing all that they can to make Jesus and the disciples comfortable. They're getting their pillows ready. They're getting, putting out the mats to make everybody feel at home. You know, when our kids come home, it's a thrill for Joanne and I. Some of our kids, we see, we see them uh, like every couple of years. But when they come home to, to visit, they're not guests, but we treat them like guests to some degree. Uh, well, in some degree, we don't. We make them make their own food at times. But, we, I mean, we prepare for them. We get that spare room ready. We get that extra mattress or two out. And, and we cook breakfast, bacon and eggs. If they're awake and I'm cooking, usually they're not awake. But anyway, bacon and eggs for them if, if uh, they're awake. It's a happy time. It's a happy time. So Martha and Mary, they're bubbling with joy now that Jesus is there. So let's look at 39 and 40. And she, Martha, had a sister named Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him, approached Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Uh, Martha is, is uh, serving Jesus, but she's distracted. She's distracted. Martha wants to make Jesus' visit a time that he'll remember. You know, in Near Eastern culture, pros uh, proper hospitality was a big deal. Even today, pr uh, to, to appropriately treat your guests is huge. If a host did not make a guest feel like they were a priority, did not generously care for them, literally, they would be shunned in the community. Hospitality was a big deal. Jesus was not just any guest. He was the teacher at her home. And she wanted to do all that she could to make his time there satisfying. Martha was rushing to get the fire, ready to cook bread. She was preparing beans, cutting up onions, uh, getting milk from the goats. All that was expected of her as a host. She was busily about doing. Martha was being driven by a cultural mindset that any observer that would have looked at Martha would have looked at her with great respect, knowing that she was putting all her heart in the serving her guest. Verses uh, 41 and 40, we, we read that. Martha was serving Jesus, but distracted. The Bible says that Martha was distracted with much serving. The serving was not a problem. The distraction was the situation. You know, distracting, distraction, it means to be drawn in different directions. Drawn in a different direction. Preoccupied with stuff. I, I, think, I think that's Greek. Preoccupied with stuff. No, it isn't. Distraction. It comes with a thought of burden. Worry. Being anxious. Though she was doing all that she could to serve Jesus, it was a burden. She was rushing around, didn't want the bread to burn, didn't want the beans to boil over, getting milk from that goat who kicked her before. 
her mind frantically rushing from one task to another, frantically going back and forth, and Mary hasn't moved a muscle sitting near Jesus. You know, it's possible to love Jesus with all of our heart, to want nothing else to serve him, but be distracted with much serving. It's possible to be in Bible college. It's possible to be in ministry. To love God, be busy doing what is culturally appropriate, doing what's expected, doing what we know must be done, but distracted. We're listing our assignments, getting them on our calendar, hopefully already by now. We're reading our books, we're doing our research, we're attending our meetings, we're working at our goals, advancing the projects. There's nothing wrong with any of that unless we're distracted. There's nothing wrong with all the stuff that needs to be done unless our minds feel like it's in a trampoline bouncing off, a trampoline house bouncing off the walls. There's nothing wrong with having more work than we can handle unless it's taken our peace and the weight becomes heavy. Let's look at verse 41 and 42. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Martha's mind is going in every direction. She's doing all the work. She feels she needs Mary's help. She's, but Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and that made her mad. Nobody to help her. Uh, Martha approaches Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care? And... Uh, uh, I know I've gone on to the other verses right now, but I'll just go back to Martha for a moment. But she's upset. And she's not only upset with Mary. Martha is upset with Jesus. You're, you heard, you, you read that. Jesus, I'm busy. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And look what Mary is doing. Don't you care? She is mad, not only at Mary, but she's mad at Jesus. And Jesus' response to Martha is one of compassion. It's one of compassion. Repeats her name twice, Martha, Martha. You're worried. And you're troubled about many things. Jesus is responding to one who loves him very much. But she's misguided. Jesus is responding to, the, to, uh, to her heart. Mary, uh, Martha is doing the best she knows how to serve Jesus. But she's worried? and troubled about many things. She's worried and troubled about not treating Jesus right. She's worried and troubled about serving, and there's no one to help her. She's worried and troubled about Mary neglecting her responsibilities. She's worried and troubled that Jesus, the righteous one, not 
even rebuking Mary for shirking her responsibility. You know, when we get distracted, we and become worried and become troubled about many things. We become worried and troubled because there's too much to do. We become worried and troubled because of something unexpected and in service or work study. And we become worried and troubled because of someone in the dorm. Because we become worried because trouble with the research just doesn't go the way we're wanting it to go. Not reading as fast as we would like. We become frustrated with those around us. And sometimes we can even get frustrated with Jesus. Answer that. I think it's Jesus. We can get frustrated with Jesus because he's not doing more to help us now. We all know that Jesus helps us. But we can get frustrated and we don't understand why he's not helping us now. Now. Jesus' response to Martha's destructions and trouble, uh, distractions, causes destruction, and troubles, Martha, Martha, one thing is needed. Martha, Martha, another way to say that, uh, the best thing is needed. The best thing, it was sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing his word. Mary didn't let circumstances control her. There were, there were expectations to fulfill, but, she, but Jesus wasn't going to be there very long, and she was going to take the opportunity. She wasn't going to miss what he had to say. Jesus' words uh, were transforming Mary's life. It says that Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, absorbing what Jesus was saying, that word hearing, she was hearing him, she was absorbing it. Not just absorbing his word, not just hearing with her ear, but when she was hearing him, she was absorbing his word. That word, the word, they are absorbing his word, that's logos, and part of the meaning of that word, it's, an ex, it's expression of intelligence. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, absorbing the intelligence of Jesus, absorbing revelation, absorbing the divinity that was speaking to her. She wasn't just hearing a word in her ear. Her life was being transformed by the Logos. What Mary chose was the one best thing. Mary was receiving revelation in her moment. Jacob, fleeing from his, for his very life from his brother Esau, he's confused, he's frightened. God gives him revelation of angels ascending and descending from heaven to earth. Israel needing deliverance from 400 years of slavery and Moses, and God gives Moses a revelation in the burning bush. Joseph, hopelessly confined in a prison, God gives him a dream. Joshua enters the promised land, going to conquer enemies far superior than Israel, and he gets a revelation of Jesus with a sword. 
Israel starving of, because of Midianite oppression. And God gives a revelation to Gideon. He's a mighty man of valor. David, a shepherd, gets a revelation from God. He's going to be a king. Paul on a ship during a hurricane. Everyone on the ship feels they're doomed, but Paul receives a revelation from the angel of God. Not one will be lost. And Mary is doing the one best thing. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Receiving revelation from divinity. From divinity. Revelation from God. You know, we can receive revelation from God and not even have an answer. You know, I, I remember uh, one, one morning I was praying and just really needed God to, to answer a particular prayer. And that whole morning, unusual, I focused on that one thing. Just praying for that need. Praying for that need. And as I'm praying for that need, I, I don't get an answer. But as I left there, I remember being very conscious. The need is met. The pr your prayer has been answered. Revelation in the moment. We might not even get an answer, but his presence is there. And that answer came later that day. Praise God. Praise God. Before you came into chapel today, what did you feel was the most needed? Was it that assignment? Was it that project? Was it that relationship? Life can be busy. But one thing is needed before anything else. It's sitting at the feet of Jesus, receiving revelation. It's hearing what Jesus has to say for the moment. For the moment, there are many distractions that keep us from truly sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing what he has to say to us today. I wonder if the musicians could come, and by the time you get up here, I'll probably be done, but that's all right. But today, Today, it's time to make a decision that will have a huge impact on our lives. It's time to commit or maybe to commit afresh to sit at Jesus' feet daily. You know, it's, it's more than just prayer. Prayer is good. But it's more than just prayer, it's revelation from divinity. And Mary didn't just choose to sit at Jesus' feet to hear with her ear, but she chose to sit at Jesus' feet because she did not want to miss the moment so that divinity would minister unto her life. Our moment is every day. We don't have to wait for Jesus to knock at our door. We don't have to uh, wait for a message to come from one of the disciples to say Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. Jesus is in our bedroom. Jesus is in the prayer room. Jesus is wherever we are. And he's wanting to sow into us divinity. And he recognizes there's much distraction. But he speaks, I think, today loud and clear that says there's one thing. There's one thing. Would you stand with me this afternoon? There's one thing. So we have plenty of time. 
And I'm wondering if we're just needing to make a commitment to the one thing, to the one thing. And if that's us today, then why don't we come? They're going to play. And uh, why don't we come and spend a few minutes at the altar to make that commitment to God. Lord, I'm committed to that one thing. For that one thing will make a difference in my moment in my reality, in my frustration. Martha, Martha, I'll not take that one thing away from Mary. She chose the best thing. The best thing. Would you come if you feel?